Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Please stand as you are able. Well, it is great to see everyone on this, uh, where are we now, sixth Sunday of Easter, still in our 50 days of Easter. Our service of Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins on page 2 of your bulletin, or page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. <coughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of Acts, which and can be found on page five of your bulletin. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believer believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gotta find the right page. Today's psalm is Psalm 98 and can be found on page five in your bulletin. And we will read this responsively. O oh, sing to the beloved a new song, for love has done marvelous things. By the strength of your indwelling presence, We too are called to do great things. We are set free through love's forgiveness and truth. Yes, your steadfast love and faithfulness 
are ever-present gifts in our lives. All the ends of the earth have seen the glory of love's eternal flame. Make a joyful noise to the beloved, all the earth. Break forth into grateful song and sing praises. Yes, sing songs of praise, extolling love's way. Lift up your hearts with gratitude and joy. Let the voices of all people blend in harmony. In unison, let the people magnify the beloved. Let the sea laugh and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the waters clap their hands. Let the hills ring out with joy. Before the beloved, who radiates love to all the earth. For love reigns over the world with truth and justice. The second reading for today comes from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. These verses come from a letter that John wrote to a community where doubt had been sown that Jesus Christ was the true Son of God. And so this was a letter in hoping to quell that argument or fear. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. 
Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. From our reading from the Acts of the Apostles, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. Well, today we continue our readings through the book of Acts In these 50 days of Easter, we've been reading from Acts rather than the Old Testament. As we hear in Acts, the early church being birthed, if you will. The early church taking its its form. And today again, we hear about a very unusual baptism. Remember last week we talked about the Ethiopian eunuch who uh, Philip uh, rides along with and and, uh, shares the scripture, and then they see that river and say, hey, what's keeping me from being baptized? So they go down immediately and baptize the Ethiopian eunuch. And today we have another baptism, a baptism of a group of Gentiles, a group of people who reached out through Cornelius. We We catch just the end of this story, and um, it's kind of a bummer that we don't get to read the entire um, part of this story, because we only catch the end, but in the er, earlier in the in the uh, tenth chapter of Acts, we hear this story of Peter having this vision of of all these foods and everything else coming down on a sheet. Remember that, and and God saying, you know. Why aren't you eating these things? Don't call profane what God has created. So he has this vision, and then it's a vision to go and visit these people, Cornelius and other Gentiles. And Cornelius also has a, has a dream and a vision to reach out and say, hey, come and visit us. We want to hear this gospel. I invite you to read all of chapter 10 of the book of Acts because it's the early church taking form and trying to figure out who's in and who's out. And it's something that we still battle with today. We want to decide who's in and who's out, don't we? So often we put up these boundaries, these gates, these walls, you name it, to keep people out. That might be out of our yards. I mean, all of us, so many of us have nice, tall privacy fence now, right? Not even chain link. We want that wood fence to make sure that we have our own private spot. We have very clear lines of which state you are in, which country you are in, who's in and who's out. We even have wars over that. But we want these people out. This is our land only. It seems to be the human condition 
of making these boundaries, making these borders. And the early church was no different. They were very clear that after Jesus' resurrection, this was a new epiphany to the Jewish people. And so you had Jewish Christians now, people who were Jewish, knew Jesus Christ, and now were following. But all the men were still circumcised. That was the mark of being a faithful follower of God. That mark of circumcision. And yes, it was only for the men, and we could get into all that. I'll leave that sermon for another time. But that was the mark. You knew who was in and who was out. And so all of a sudden, Peter comes to these Gentiles, visits with Cornelius and his crew, his followers, his his group, and all of a sudden, Peter and these other circumcised Christians, Jewish Christians, come, and all of a sudden, they're blown away. The Holy Spirit is alive and well. God is with these people, and they want to know more about the risen Christ. Now, we hear this in so many different ways, and I I love Peter himself. He talks about this in verse 28. You yourselves know that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. Now may I ask why you sent for me? So Peter comes and he's like, okay, I'm not supposed to be here, but God's doing something different here. God has spoken to me. The Holy Spirit has has moved me to be here with you that I'm not supposed to be with. So why'd you call me? And what is their answer? We want to know Jesus. We want to hear about this risen Christ. And so Peter shares about the risen Christ. And all of a sudden, these followers know that the Holy Spirit is alive and well with these people. Can you imagine the mind-blowing moment of, wait a minute, God's with us. How can God be with them? And then Peter says, well, what is, who's going to stop us? What is to keep us from baptizing these people? And all the other circumcised Christians are like, I can't come up with anything. Let's baptize them. Can you imagine, well, we can read in chapter 11 and 12, all the controversy about this. Because this was Peter and and the followers of Peter right there reaching out in a new way, baptizing people that weren't supposed to be baptized. And the church has a whole conference about what this means. And of course, they came out on the side of, wait, the Holy Spirit is doing something new. So the Gentiles were brought in to the fold without that requirement, without that mark of circumcision. Those who they thought were out, they realized were in. Those barriers that the church set up, that humanity has set up, have been dissolved by the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine all the Jewish mothers back then, or many of them, sitting there going, oy vey, what is happening? Uh, God's love's like being spread to everybody. How can this be? Also kind of imagine Jesus being up there looking down or wherever God, uh, God is looking upon us going, oy vey, they'll never get it. My love is so big, it is for everybody. And so today we hear this story the story of the Holy Spirit breaking in in a new way. And as we hear this story, as we hear this combined with our gospel story of abiding in God's love, abiding in that love that Christ shared for us so he can be in us and our joy can be complete. What are those boundaries? What are those borders? What are those walls we still set up between us and them. Why can't it be just us, the community of 
humanity created in the image of God. Today as we hear this story, as we hear the Holy Spirit moving in a different way, as we hear Peter's um, proclamation of if God has called it good, how can I call it profane? May we open up our vision. May we open up our understanding of who's in and who's out. Not even that. Can we just get away from saying who's in and who's out? And just say God's love is for all of us. God's love, God stretched out his arms on the hard wood of the cross for the world. Not just for a few, but for the world. May we know and may we seek and serve Christ in all people. May we look for that image of God in everyone we meet. May we break down those barriers. May we take away from Jesus at least one reason to say, oy vey, they don't understand. May we love all as God loves us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now may we stand and affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed, that can be found on page 8 of your bulletin or page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me for the prayers of the people, Form 3. The prayers of the people can be found on page 9 of your bulletin or on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, Mother, Creator of all, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Bishop Kim, for all bishops, 
priests, deacons, and lay ministers, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. There may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for peace in all places of violence, especially for the people of Israel, Palestine, Ukraine, and for all who live under conditions of security, apartheid, or war. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. Today we lift up Ron Fuller and Mike Ranslam and all those we know and love but see no longer. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May you also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We invite you to add your own prayers and petitions at this time, silently or aloud. For Anne and Eric, for Bridget. Today, Lord, we pray for all of those in our parish family who are sick, those who care for them, and those who are in need of God's strength and guidance. Natalie and Zoe, Marge, Megan, Nancy, Tom, Peggy S., Linda, Susan, Bill, Kit, Richard, Sheila, Vicar Janet and family, Rick, Libby, Mick, Kirk, Maureen, Rod, Melissa, Jen, Judy, our military families, law enforcement and first responders, our homebound parishioners, those in nursing facilities, all who are sick and the health care workers who care for them. And today, let us pray together for our country. We pray for justice, we pray for peace, we pray for understanding, and we pray for an end to the racism, hatred, violence, and the political division that continue to infect and divide this country. We celebrate with those who have birthdays this week. John Baird, Adriana Prince, Edith Wilkin, Kenzie Rogers, Dennis Smith, and Cindy Fasser. This week's altar flowers have been given by the Fuller family in loving memory of Ron Fulmer. We invite you to add your own thanksgivings at this time, silently or aloud. So Christ Church. Holy and gracious God, we do lift these and all the prayers of our hearts up to you, knowing that you are constantly doing more than we could ever ask or imagine. 
In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, everyone, both in the sanctuary and on Zoom. God's peace. Please be seated. Yes, thank you. Well, it is great to see everyone today. We do uh, welcome our visitors and newcomers, both here in the sanctuary and on Zoom. Here in the sanctuary, if you'd like to let us know who you are by signing the guest book in the back, that would be great. And on Zoom, you can put your information in on the chat. A few items of life in the parish, uh, things uh, keep uh, pressing along here at Christ Church. Um, we will have, uh, be serving on Tuesday um, up at St. Clair's in downtown Denver. So if you're interested in helping out and serving the homeless there, uh, please uh, uh, sign up and everything or get a hold of Lloyd. That is in the bulletin here. Uh, we continue with our Thursday night Compline service at 8 o'clock. The Daughters of the King are uh, leading that uh, on Zoom and everything, so you can log in and uh, walk with them to the Order of Compline um, uh, each Thursday evening. Also, please keep the Daughters of the King in your prayer. They're all traveling back uh, from uh, Woodland Park, uh, from uh, Cathedral Ridge. They had their big uh, diocesan um, uh, retreat down there this uh, weekend and everything, so keep them all in your prayers. Um, you can see in there, um, we also have our uh, cleanup day uh, this coming Saturday. So uh, come, hopefully it won't be raining or snowing too bad and everything, but uh, come and help us get everything cleaned up and ready for the spring. Um, again, and a lot of other things going on, including the um, um, online, you can order the church um, logo gear and everything between shirts and, and uh, tote bags and everything. So if you're interested in grabbing a jacket or something like that, you can sign up there as well. So uh, please join us there. Also, uh, Sunday the 26th, so a couple weeks away, we'll be serving up at Oakwood here in Castle Rock as well. So please uh, sign up for that as you would like as well. And today is also the first Sunday of the month, so we have our birthday and anniversary prayers. So anyone with a May uh, birthday, if you would stand here in the sanctuary or online, you can raise, raise your hand there. And if everyone else would turn to page 11, that would be great. And we'll pray for all those celebrating their birthdays in May. Let us pray. 
Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may thy peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, everybody. And how about uh, wedding anniversaries? Any uh, May wedding anniversaries? If you all would stand, uh, raise your hand. And on Zoom, raise your hand. And we'll pray for all those celebrating their uh, anniversaries. Let us pray. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Happy anniversary. I appeal to you, siblings in Christ, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Please stand as you are able. Thank you. Thank you. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy known have we given thee. Thank you, Lord. Now we continue with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 12 of your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord 
For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Ron and Mike and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand as you are able. And now we continue on page 20 of your bulletin. Let us pray. Barbara and Karen, we send you out bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we share one bread and one cup. Go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you both. And now we continue with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be careful as you go out into God's creation, for it does not belong to you. Be gentle with yourself and with one another, for you are the dwelling place of the Most High God. Be alert and hesitant, for sometimes God is but a whisper. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, let us go forth in the name of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. 